last time we talked about delegates and I challenged you guys to make a door that would keep track of two specific enemies and once those two enemies had been defeated the door would open and that is exactly what I have made off screen right here and I'm very bad at gaming. Uh, so both enemies have been defeated now the door is open and we can go on to whatever would be in this next room over here. I also made a little bit of a more twin stick shooter like level design to go with that. And with that I do think that we're getting pretty close to the end of the C++ specific course. There's a bunch of stuff that we can talk about like adding widgets, adding UI, but most of that while parts of it are possible to do in C++ if you want to, I personally very much like doing those kind of things in blueprints using functions on the actors that exist in c++ so today i want to talk a little bit more about our health because at the moment if we go into our player blueprint here and we search for our hp we find we have a single float with hp and that's fine but we're going to want to have a bit more in terms of stats and we could just make a bunch of floats and that would more or less work but what we could also do is we could make a specific struct a structure that holds a number of different types of variables that we can just look at as a whole rather than every time we need to look at the stats we need to look at one float and then the next and then the next and then the next we can just get that struct and that has all the information we need in it which is much easier especially if we're going to be displaying those things again in widgets we're going to set this up in c++ but then we would use this kind of stuff most likely in blueprint as well so let's get into that and into our base magic character header file just like we declared that delegate last time outside of the class we're going to do the same thing here and we're going to be declaring a u struct in which we can also uh, specify that this has to be a blueprint type that way we can also access this through a blueprint which is quite nice from there we can just make a struct by saying struct and then this is kind of uh, like a class so we need to put in this generated body stuff here and there we can just put in a bunch of variables so we can make a public section and make a u property blueprint let's say read only for the time being because we're only going to want to read from this most likely uh but we also want to be able to edit defaults only because we're going to be able to edit the health and the shot speed and the shot rate and all that kind of stuff on a pure blueprint basis this way and there we can just start adding things like the float for the hp and from there we can simply copy paste a couple of these and we can say our shot speed our fire rates maybe something like our movement speed and then at the very end the bottom here after the closing squirrely bracket we do need a semicolon as well to end this thing off now it's going to take a moment here to realize that we actually don't have any errors and we need to give this struct a name a struct type needs to start with a f and from there you can name it whatever you want so we're going to call this uh, stats apparently stats was being problematic so i just call it character stats and now we have this character stats struct which holds a hp value a shoot speed value which would be shot speed but what do you know a fire rate value and a movement speed value and let's go into blueprint here real quick and let's say on begin play we want to do something with that we can make a variable of that type now in blueprint so we can say our character stats and if we drag that in we can split the structure pin and it has our it has new var before everything uh that's a little stupid uh, but it has hp and speed and fire rate and movement speed now instead of using a hp float we can now just use a f character stats variable as our stats so let's go look through our base magic character somewhere in here we have hp uh we're going to change that to being a f character stats with the name uh character stats that's going to be a little problematic because we're referencing hp a couple of times here we'll 
change that in a second. First and foremost, in the constructor, we're going to give these things some default values. So we'll go f character stats dot, and then we can say HP by default uh, will be 50. Otherwise, all these uh, will be by default set to zero. And we, of course, don't want that. So we also want to set our fire rate, our shot speed, and our movement speed. And we're not going to implement most of these things. It's just for the example at this point. So let's say our movement speed would be uh, something like 800 by default. Our shot speed would probably be something a little higher than that. So 1200. Fire rate is, depending on how you implement this, this could be a number that is number of bullets per second. Or this could be the time between bullets. I think time between bullets is easier to program. So let's go by default for 0 0.75. And then our default HP stat will be 50. Now, anywhere we were previously referencing the HP directly, we need to change that to our character stats dot HP. And it really is as simple as that. So we had our time between fire variable as well. We're going to uh, replace that with our fire rate variable out of our character stats. And then we uh, also want our shot speed. That is a little bit more involved to actually implement because we need to change something about our uh, bullet that we're spawning here after it is spawned. And then we can try uh, doing something about that real quick. So instead of making this an actor pointer, what we'll do is we'll just make this a base bullet pointer right away. And in the projector movements, which we'll need to include. And if we're lucky, just setting the initial speed um, to our shot speed variable that we have here will work. <laughs> uh, but maybe it won't, depending on how things work under the hood. Like, if this is all done within one frame before this thing actually starts moving, this will likely work, but it might still not. And this needs to be in the public section of our bullet here. So let's change the projector movement component. It would be better to make a getter for this, which is a function that just returns this that is public, while the pointer itself remains private. But for now, this will do fine. It'll, it'll work. So with a little bit of luck, that works. Uh, otherwise, it would be a lot more involved and complicated, and I don't feel like going through that right now. So then on begin play, we're also going to set our uh, movement speed with this variable that we have here. So at begin play, we'll uh, get character movement, for which, of course, we also need to add yet another include, because we're going to need to access something from that component which will be our maximum walk speed, and that we will set to being our character stats movement speed. And now we all have uh, that stuff set through whatever destruct has in its values. So let's make sure that we have this uh, struct as a U property that we can edit anywhere. Probably add a default only uh, would be fine here, but it doesn't really matter that much. And now we can see we have in our base magic character, we have our character stats, which we can expand. And it has all of these variables here. And if we go into our enemy, it also should have the character stats. And we want to set the fire rate here to something like 1.25 instead. And their movement speed should be a little lower than our own. So let's set that to 700 and then uh, 850 for their shooting speed. They will have 35 HP, where the player might have 100 HP, for instance. And as easily as that, we now have two entirely separate characters. And again, if we were to make a UI, we wouldn't now need to get the HP and get the shot speed and get the fire rate and get the movement speed. We would just get the character stats. We can break that structure pin, like I showed you before, and you just have access to all that information through one variable. If you need certain values to be always coupled together because they're relevant to each other or whatever, it's generally a good thing to combine them into a struct just to keep your things from getting too cluttered. So now you'll be able to see this is my movement speed and that is ever so slightly faster than their movement speed. And here we run into a little bit of a bug and I'm going to keep this in because it's important to keep this in mind. If you're working in C++, it's very easy to just assume that certain pointers are going to have a value and 
sometimes they don't. So what's happening here, uh, I think, anyway, is in our BT uh, enemy shooting here, we just assume that this AI controller that works and we have a reference to our uh, base enemy character and that's fine. And then that enemy will shoot a bullet. But what happens if, for whatever reason, between the minuscule amount of time where this task starts being executed and when we get to this shoot bullet function and everything about that triggers, uh, this enemy is destroyed. And that's what literally just happened. That's why we crashed the game. We were shooting an enemy, it was killed just as it was about to shoot. So uh, at that point, you're trying to access a null pointer and accessing a null pointer will crash your game and the entire editor. So what you want to do is we want to put in just a simple if check for that pointer being valid. And you can just do that like this very easily. And this is where the node results also come in. I know that this is not what this video is about, but we're going to talk about it anyway for a quick second here. Uh, because all we want to do is we want to return success when this has happened. So that succeeded. And then if the enemy, for whatever reason, is not valid anymore, uh, we can return failed instead. And that will tell the AI system that, hey, we tried to execute this node, uh, but it didn't work. So if that for any reason then would have impact on other decisions that have to be made uh, down the line in the behavior tree, that's how you can use that. Again, not what this video is about, but good to know. So now that should be fixed, and I can show you that I walk a little bit faster. It looks like uh, the shot speed thing uh, might indeed not work the way that I might have hoped that it would work, so... That's a little too bad. I killed both enemies, and now I can keep going. And I can design more and more levels and add more and more enemies. We can add a enemy type which uh, walks faster. So we can say uh, BP enemy uh, 1 and change this one's material. And maybe we want to make this one slightly smaller. So let's make this one 75% the size, something like that. And then we're going to make him even weaker so we're going to go down to like 30 hp uh but we'll make his fire rate uh half a second and his movement speed will be higher than ours and now we've just designed an entirely separate second enemy which is fantastic so we can put that down those are the materials we can put like one of these down in the next room and then put an enemy there as well and now we again we need to make our way through these first ones. Uh, we definitely also need to change up the AI because things were going through the walls there. And these things should also uh, destroy the bullets when they hit the wall because otherwise we're going to spawn in way too many different bullets that are just flying off into nowhere. But as a general just overview of programming in C++, this is how we set up things and how we can make a game. And feels like the engine again is crashing what is the issue this time it's probably a reference to the player because i think i just died i think it's this uh issue here i was trying to fire a bullet from a player that didn't exist anymore so again here we also want to put in a null pointer check real quick and only execute this function if it actually um exists that object so there's a lot of null pointer things that i probably missed and that's the thing that I warned you about way back in one of the first videos in this playlist or this series or whatever, is um, these pointers, they're the only real, like, complicated and annoying thing about C++, because this stuff happens. And it can also happen within Blueprint, don't get me wrong, but it happens a lot less. So you're going to need to get used to putting these kind of if statements before a function call like this, just to be sure, because you don't want players finding this out after your game is done. And you don't want to go back over all of your pre-existing code and hoping to God that you've just found all of the loose null pointers, uh, because you're always going to miss something. So do make this a habit. In my own game, personally, that I'm working on, I have been trying to find an issue regarding a null value that's crashing the game sometimes for some players for like a month now. I still haven't found it because I was lazy. I skipped the step. I didn't put in one of these checks for every single time that I'm accessing a function or some information through a pointer. And now it's come back to bite me. So be better than me and do this.
But I do think that is going to leave the C++ series uh, here for right now. We have effectively made a playable game. And from this point forward, I think you should be able to figure things out on your own. That's not to say that there's not going to be any more C++ tutorials. Now that this series is done, I'm going to, moving forward, also make videos like I have been for blueprints, for specific features. I'm going to make C++ versions of those as well. And if all goes well, there will also be a next course, a long-running series going up after this. Uh, what it will be about is still up in the air, but it is likely going to be about network replication. And that's going to have a Blueprint version first, and then I'm going to make a C++ version uh, either after or parallel with that, depending on how well I can manage. So thanks for watching. I hope this has shed a little bit of light on working in C++ and coding and all that kind of good stuff. You should be able to figure things out going from here. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,